Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Noor Mashaha. I'm a prostodontic president in Riyadh Al University. I graduated from Tshi University 2010. Today I'm going to talk about the uh, description of color, color replication process and aesthetics. All of us know that we have understand the color description to achieve an aesthetic restoration. It's necessary to understand the process in which the color and translucency of fixed restorations are planned and obtained, so as to replicate the color and contour of its adjacent teeth. Any errors, especially in the color replication process, have been problem, right? So, we are here today to talk about the principles of color, light, and human perception as they related to color replication process, and aesthetics of fixed restoration. The color, it's like a solid body, so we can descri uh, describe it by three dimensions, length, width, and depth, right? So, there's two systems I'd explain the color. First one is Mansell color order system, and the second is a CIE lab uh, color system that is more quantitative. Mansell color order system is a popular method okay, of visual describing color. The three attributes of color in this system are called hue, chroma, and value. So, what about the hue? A hue it describes the actual colors. So, it defines the um, object. It can be red, green, yellow, and so on. What about the chroma? Chroma is defined as the intensity of a hue. The saturation and chroma are used in the color. So, in dental literature, both mean the strength of a given hue, right? So, a simple way to visualize differences in chroma is to imagine a bucket of water. When one drop of ink is added, a solution of low chroma results. And now, adding a second drop of ink increases what? Increases the chroma. And that is mean if we add more so, of the solution, so it's obtained that is almost all ink and consequently of light chroma. So, chroma is a saturation, okay, of a color. What about the value? Where you define that it's uh, relative to brightness or darkness of the color. So we can see how it's going to be uh, darker and lighter. So the brightness of any object is a direct consequence of the amount of light energy that reflects or transmitted the light. So a restoration that has too high value is too bright may be easily detected by an observer and in a common aesthetic problem in Vita Ceramic Rostopontex. Now, I prefer the Vita Classic Shade Guide. I always use it in my dental office. When you use any guide, you have to let your lab use the same guide. So when you do the color replication process in your dental office, you have to let your dental lab to know the exact guidance that you use in your dental office and he had to use the same he has to use the same okay so we can see this arrangement of vita classic sheet guide and now i'm going to talk about the meaning of each uh shade for a it's related to orange b to yellow C, yellow gray, D, brown gray. What does it mean? That means when we are going to D, we have more chroma in a color. So when we are going to A, we have more value. Okay, so A is brighter, right? And D for is darker. That means value. And what about the chroma? Chroma that is a saturation of the color. Yani, I'm going to talk about, uh, for example, D2, less saturation than D4. 
for example. We can see also this picture, it will explain more about the value on chroma. B1 has highest value and lowest chroma of this guide, but C4 has lowest value, highest chroma. When you can understand this, you can understand all the definition of the color. Now, when you will take the shade, you have to look at a neutral color in your data office. When you're taking it, you have to take it in a second. Don't take a long time while taking your uh, dental restorations color because uh, you have to take it as fast as much as you can. When you find that the color of the restorations is between A1, B2, how we can dis distinguish between these colors, how we can uh, choose the specific color that our tooth is the same of the adjacent. That will explain it today very well. When you take the shade, you have to understand that the, the tooth is not like any object. It's like an anatomical structure. You have to understand that you have a color of the incisal, a color of the body, a color of the cervical. You have to match each point of these with the adjacent teeth to take the exactly the same color of the uh, other teeth. What about the muscle color order system, you? We can see about this uh, wheel, the color around the wheel and its arrangement around it this is a view that means red yellow green blue and etc so it's determined a wavelength of the reflected or transmitted light observed the shorter the wavelength okay the closer the hue is violet portion of the spectrum the, long, the longer the wavelength, the closer it's to the red portion. So, in the master color system, hues are arranged around the wheel. What about the saturation? Saturation or chroma are used in dental literature. The intensity of chroma um, uh, of a particular hue is more intense on the outer rim than near the hub of the wheel. The same example that I talked before when I started the lecture, that a simple way to visualize differences in a chroma is to imagine a bucket of water. When one drop of ink is added, a solution of low chroma results. Adding a second drop of ink increases the chroma and so on. Until solution is obtained, that is almost all ink and consequently of high chroma. What about the value? Value we can see, like uh, when we use a mobile, we can make the screen more bright or less bright, more darker. That means value. So it's related to lightness or darkness of a color or brightness of an object. The brightness of any object is a direct consequence of the amount of light energy the object reflects or transmitted. It's possible for an object of different hues to reflect the same number of photons and thus have the same brightness or value. So arrangement of value and chroma in the Mansell system, it's um, like this picture. What about the CIE lab color system? This system is used in a machine uh, color replication. It's, uh, it has a three color spaces, L, A, and B. So it's uh, more uh, quantitative. We can see this case. My patient came to me. He was smoking. He had uh, bad oral uh, health. And uh, when I started his uh, case before, I tried to do scaling and polishing, good polishing, to know the exact color of his teeth. I didn't advise him to change his color by whitening because he was smoking. And he came to change this bridge for the fallen tears on the upper teeth, uh, 21, uh, 22, 11, and 12. Uh, he said he, it's not 
matching the color or the shade, shade or shape of other adjacent teeth. So I started work on the teeth by uh, uh, scaling and polishing, let patient uh, take care of his uh, teeth and explain to him how to take care at home because uh, the cooperation between patients and dentists is so important to make your uh, restorations uh, much better for more time. So then I uh, put uh, temporary and after that we have the final restoration that is matching the same of the adjacent teeth and you can see how the translucency of the incisor, how is the value for the body, how is the cervical uh, uh, dark, darker, it's the same of the adjacent. So it's very important when you want to make an aesthetic restoration, you have to exactly understand the color uh, system. Now we are going to see uh, this case. Also, she came to my clinic, uh, wanted to, to change uh, centrals. She put um, uh, restorations to close the diastema between the two centrals. She's uh, 27 years like this. She um, didn't uh, smoke before. And I uh, tried to change the color, okay, to make it the same uh, of adjacent teeth color, shape and shade, just to be matching. <laughs> ما في أي بلوز شوفوا textures details وهي لسه دراي مو مركبة for cementation آخر سمار أنا كتير مبسوطة بالنتيجة الحمد لله شايفين القدر كيف طالع exactly the same و تماما ما بدنا شايفين الشفافية So, the phase of color uh, replication should be in the dental office, which the, the information of the color and translucency of the adjacent teeth to be matched and recorded through either visual shape matching or instrumental color analysis. Shape matching phase. We have to understand that the light is necessary for color to exist, right? So when we have any object, and we have light on this object, we can see the color of this object. So the light is necessary for color to exist. An object that is perceived as certain color absorbed all light waves. A restoration that has too high a value is too bright, may be easily detected by any observer, and is a common aesthetic problem in metaceramic ceramic So when we are going to uh, take a color of restoration, we have to, to know, understand that the quality of light source is so important. It should be used during visual shape matching, right? So the color and the light of uh, the light that we use in dental office should be equal at uh, the same angles when you are taking the shade of the two, okay? Be careful of the shadows and any other colors that affect taking the shade while doing it at the dental office. Unfortunately, the most common light source in dental uh, office are uh, in can scent or fluorescent. So I try to do combination between the um, wet color and yellow color just to make a neutral uh, color, okay? So we can see this case, my patient came to me, wants to change the lateral. She said it's uh, not matching the shape and shade of other uh, teeth. So I try uh, to start with this patient. As always, we have to also understand the concept of the gum, how it's important for our aesthetic cases. And I guide my patient how to take care of her gum after um, giving her a protocol for taking care of the gum massage and uh, mouthwash. So I remove her old restoration 
first and then I prepare direct restoration temporary at the same visit and I try to reduce the margin and instruct my patient to do massage for the gingiva and take care of her oral health. So um, a week after week, my gum uh, get better uh, shape just to be almost exactly the same of the adjacent lateral. And then I start uh, fabrication of the restoration for that lateral and I try to make it matching as much as I can because I'm not achieving the same length of the gum. Uh, it was, um, there was maybe 0 0.25 millimeter. That's why I tried to change a shape of the restoration. So the light, when it comes on the restoration, it will disappear on the cervical area. So the cervical area will be, uh, for my eye, darker than I can see in actual size. We can imagine when we have uh, someone who is um, gaining weight, you can let him uh, wear a blouse, a white blouse with a black waist uh, color. So when the light comes uh, frontal direction, you can see that this uh, human um, in a fat weight uh, is getting to your eyes uh, thinner. That is the same of how we can manage our light source on a, an object and how we can take, take care of the anatomic shade, shape of the tooth and how it reflects the shade and make the shape shorter or smaller or bigger that means we can fabricate the shape and shade by taking care of the anatomy the light point the um uh, the, the line angle the incisal edge so we can do fabrication if we have to understand the uh, color we have to understand how to do a good anatomical structure. Visual shade matching. The visual shade matching has three main factors. Lightning, subjectivity of a human vision and the object. So, the influence, the outcome of visual shade matching, the dentist can improve the accuracy of uh, this process. So, we talked that a light is very important, an object that perceives a certain color observe uh, all light waves corresponding to other colors and reflect only the waves of the object colors. For example, an object that absorbs blue and green light and reflects red light appears red, right? So the eye is sensitive only to the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Electromagnetic spectrum between 380 to 750 nanometer. The quality and quantity of the light source and the environment in which the teeth and shade guides are being visually matched are important. So, in one study, evaluators obtain better visual shade matching in controlled stable constant and standard full spectrum lighting than in a day light. Lighting, we have a quality of light source. So, we have to understand that the color temperature that is forever for the 5500 Kelvin. Also, we have to understand this concept when we will take a good picture. We have to understand that the light source that we use for uh, taking, uh, for capturing the picture, because the light source is so important to get a perfect picture. So the same thing that you see between your eyes, the, the same things that you have to match in your picture, the same things that you have to do fabrication in your restorations and the same shape and color of what your eye see. So, the human vision 
we are talking about this also uh, after the slide about the quantity quantity of light source. What about it? That means in uh, for the dental uh, operator be between eighteen to twenty eight lux for uh, twenty eight lux for dental operator. We can see that optical prism, the white light contains all the uh, light, uh, all the colors. Okay, we have three phases of colors that is red and blue and yellow. Auxiliary light source. The auxiliary light source for shade matching should be intense enough to overcome the influence of the ambient light. It has been recommended that ratio to task shade matching to ambient uh, light should be not exceed 3 to three, 1. Shade matching environment, all of us understand that the chroma of the environment should be carefully controlled, okay? So we have to uh, remove lipstick, we have to take care of the walls, the stuff clothing, patients drive, and shade matching environment have a chroma of four muscle units or less, which are the pastel of uh, or the ideal neutral gray tones. When you make a good color replication, you will make a piece of art in your cases. A human vision. So the eye under low lighting condition, only the roots are used, right? Only the roots are used. And in dark, uh, in dark uh, environment, we can, we can uh, distinguish only the two colors. Um, the green and blue. For the cones, we can. It's more active, more uh, highlight, and it can match all the colors. So the roots are used under low lightning. The cones under higher lightning. In uh, the roots is more sensitive to blue green objects. And that means a uh, scotopic uh, vision. For the cones, it means dark adaptation. Okay. Um, dark adaptation called uh, when we are changed from photopic to scotopic. Uh, photopic, that means that the color vision under higher lighting. We need 40 minutes to be able to uh, distinguish between the dark and light. So, for the visual shade matching, we have uh, uh, four definitions. We have to understand it carefully. We have meterism, uh, metamerism, uh, that means the color. Two colors, two different colors. Okay, for example, we have pink and uh, red. To be matched under a given lighting condition, but have different spectral reflectance. For example, uh, we can see uh, the pink and red that they are the same color under a source of tungsten light, for example. So uh, it appears to match under the operator light, for example, may no longer be satisfactory on in daylight. What about fluorescence? Uh, have you ever seen uh, these teeth like this before? That means fluorescence. It's mismatch can occur if the dental restoration has different fluorescence than the natural tooth. So, um, it doesn't play a significant role in color matching interstitions. And unfortunately, most of patients, they prefer it, and I don't know how. Opacence means that natural teeth at their incisal edge has translucency. So, uh, that creates an effect in appearance um, bluish to white colors as the teeth Teeth are seen at different angles. So we can see the uh, incisal edge 
how that the light is a scattering effect and creates these details. Color blindness. <laughs> Most of uh, women uh, has ha, have the ability to distinguish between these colors, but eight percent of the male population uh, couldn't be able to distinguish between these colors. So that means color blindness. And now we're talking about the shade selection system. I always prefer Vita Classic. The most convenient method for selecting shade is available personal shade guide. Always take a shade of the incisal body and neck. Okay, never ever take the only one shade for, for your tooth because your tooth it's not a, a dull or it's it's really a vital object you have to care about each details in your structure in your tooth structure so the shade guide is arranged in five lightness level um this mean that each lightness level has sufficient variation in chroma and a hue to cover the natural tooth color space this is in contrast to traditional shade guides, which are not uniformly spaced. Lightness is selected first, then chroma or saturation, and finally the hue. So, when we are going to take the shade, we have to start by value, then chroma, after that, hue. What does that mean? It means that when we are going to take the shade, you have to take the value. Value means that um, A1, A2, A3, A4, for example, and etc. Then you have to uh, to know um, a value in in the shade guide. We have to back to the first uh, slides. For example, okay, you can see that uh, different uh, colors replication. We can see here the value, the value B1, A1, B2, D2, A2, C1. Like this, we are going to the darkest in value. So try to choose first the value of the tooth and then the chroma. You can see how uh, how much the uh, hue is. Uh, constant with the chroma saturation and finally you can detect the hue of the color location the hue the actual color that you uh, should do we have many machines that detecting the uh, shade matching light device we can use a dentine shade guide Always take a shade before preparation and after preparation and take the color of the indie color, that means the Denton shade color. And there is a system of IPS Empress uh, Ivoclar Viva Dent, provides specially colored dye materials that match the Denton shade guide and send it to lab. Okay, after preparation, send it to lab that the dye of this tooth that I prepared is, for example, ND3 or ND9. What does it mean? That means when your tooth is dark, the laboratory should match the core of this tooth to cover and mask the um, ND of this tooth, of the, this darker tooth, to make the core of the restoration same matching of the color of the adjacent teeth, and then he can start to build up the uh, core to make it at the seam of the adjacent teeth and make it vital as much as he can by taking care of anatomy and the uh, light reflection on the structures. Surface corrections of these errors include surface characterization, uh, include custom shape guides and the shape matching process. We can see um, custom shape guide and 
it it's gonna help us to to do a shade replication but I always prefer when I have rhythm and shade matching I can go for composite and do matching with uh, the color application and uh, translucency and so on so I'll give you uh, some points that will help you and remember always to try and practice and try to make your eyes as the same of what you see in the actual and what you will do fabricate and then what you will transfer to the patient's mouth so um, try to use photos try to use composite fillings try to use machine try to use your eyes whatever but you have to uh, to, to, to um, achieve the actual color replication Shade matching should be made under balanced lighting. It's so important that the lighting should be balanced. And uh, shade matching environment with gray or pastel color walls complete. Anything on the patient that influences the shade matching, including bright in color, clothing, lipstick, should be draped. And lipstick should be removed. Also take care of your gloves any color that affects teeth and shade. The teeth to be matched should be clean and should be made at the beginning of the, of the patient's visit. Uh, cheek retractors should be used to provide an unhydrated uh, inter-oral shade matching area. Uh, choices of shade uh, tab should be uh, expanded by using several shade guides. The technician should be asked to mix the porcelain in equal amount to obtain and in between shades. The patient should be viewed at the eye level. Yani don't take the shade by uh, 12 o'clock or by 6 o'clock. You have to take the shade by the same uh, eye level at the working distance of approximately 10 inches or 25 centimeters. Wetting the surface of both tooth and shade tab helps remove the differences. Shade matching should be made quickly, less than 5 seconds, with the shade tab places directly next to the tooth being matched. The dentist should rest his eye between the viewings uh, by focusing on the neutral color surface immediately before the matching. To select the appropriate hue, the canine tooth is recommended for comparison. The dentist can select an appropriate value by uh, squinting. The number of shade tapes, uh, tabs uh, should be reduced and separated to approximately three as quickly as possible. 14. Shade matching should be confirmed at one or two other visits and under several different lights. Okay. If an exact match can't be selected and you can't match the color, shade tab with the lower chroma and highest value should be selected. The dentist should mark the polychromatic uh, natural of the tooth being with one of the following. First of all, shade distribution chart, digital image, for example, or staining on the closet matching shade tab. We can see how the shade is distribution chart by uh, machine. We can see how it's going to be. Where is the translucent uh, place, the opaque, the orange stains, whatever. The Vita shade, uh, it's easy shade and uh, measuring system. Okay. It's color measuring instruments. It's going to help you when you have to fabricate the actual shade. But for me, um, I prefer my eyes to do matching the color replication. The shade, uh, you can see how the image is uploaded and viewed, how we can transfer it by scanning, sending by mail to the uh, dental office and the fabrication and printing by another machine. It's going to be easy and um, very well. But for me, I still find that the traditional ways is much better. <laughs> And I'm, I'm thinking that you, in the future, maybe we, we're not back to the traditional ways at, at all. 
We can use composite fillings to do uh, actual shade of the tooth in translucent, the location of spots, stains, cracks, and so on. So always try to make a good communication between you and the dental lab and how to understand the patient's desires and how to translate all the patient's desires to a paper between you and dental lab office to make the um, restorations make sense for your patients. So communication must be taken seriously. Each person can inter interpret the last person differently with disastrous results. So patient want, this dentist says, technician hears. So try always to um, make a good communication with lab. Try to send him the pictures and the um, uh, before um, and during procedure, final procedure, and let him know the actual uh, shade for the ND color of the tooth preparation because any error it will not make uh, a good treat for your uh, dental work office. So the errors that is associated with the application of the selected shade with dental porcelain are related to the underlying metal used or the ND color that it's not masked well by the core the patch of porcelain powder, the brand of porcelain, the number of time glazing was performed. So we can see that uh, we, we can arrive at match restoration, but we have to, to make a good fabrication between dental work at the office and dental lab. We can understand that the aesthetic, how it's important. We have to understand the high lip, average and low lip. We can know that the affected of the gum and smile and smile arc of our um, final aesthetic analysis and how important of buccal corridor differs um, to the space between the cheeks and teeth and affects also the shadows of the cheeks on the teeth. We have to understand these elements, so it's, it's gonna help us to understand how to analyze, analyze the smile, or you can make a good smile for our dentist. We can understand that buccal corridor, maybe it will be um, medium buccal corridor, large buccal corridor, or no buccal corridor. Um, we can make it by computer. Um, try always to understand also the proportions because uh, aesthetic depends largely on proportions. Anything that we see, it's very nice, it depends on a perfect proportion or golden proportion. So, um, it, um, the posterior to the first molar was considered the most attractive and youthful. Anatomy of a smile. Um, the caliper always extend to the golden proportion. I talked about this in my previous lecture for the digital smile design and how to do a uh, smile analysis and uh, how to make the proportion of the smile. So studies of uh, simulated smiles have revealed that designing prosthesis to match the golden proportion is by no means optimal except for patients in whom incisor size length may be increased after periodontal disease. So the ideal smile, the proportion of the ideal smile is 80% off, and uh, when we're going to 70% of it will be um, uh, uh, smaller and taller. When uh, we're going to 90, it will be more square. The ideal teeth size also should be understood. The midline, gender, slight smile, and uh, morphology of the smile. So, an understanding of the science of color is crucial for success. Limitation in materials and techniques may make a perfect color match impossible. A harmonious situation can be achieved. Shade matching should be approached in a methodical 
and organized manner, a newly developed chat systems and instruments may help the practitioner, the practitioner achieve a, re a reliable restoration match, knowledge of the optimal proportion and the realistic position of the teeth to each other, and the soft tissue is essential. Thank you so much for your time, and I hope it makes sense.